If that doesn't work, then uh, it comes a friendly buyout offer. And if that doesn't work, then the police visit you. And then if that doesn't work, then they, they add a couple zeros to the carrot. And if that doesn't work, then they start playing rough, you know, and, and there's, so there's this whole escalating series of uh, strategies. And, and in fact, I've experienced, you know, most of that bag of tricks. And so it's a thing where uh, uh, nobody's ever gotten close. And so and you can't there's no you can't sneak past them. Uh, there's no one run and hide. Uh, you really have to do it in the I mean, in fact, uh, I remember when Dennis was in jail the first time, uh, I was talking to uh, a long time, you know, observer of this scene, and he said, "If you're going to play this game, you do it in downtown Manhattan. <laughs> That's where you got to play that game. And you don't, you don't think you're going to go hiding somewhere in a shack in Montana. You better do it right in downtown Manhattan." Now, again, Adam probably did, but still, you know, he still barely survived the experience. So, again, the 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 powers that again the quote powers that be. I mean, these guys, uh, again, when they told uh, Steve Greer that they paid $100 billion in quiet money, uh, when I heard him say that back in 2004, it made perfect sense to me because I had, you know, I knew that I wasn't seeing all of them. I knew I was just seeing the tip of the iceberg. And, and 10,000 people at an average of 10 million each made, made perfect sense to me. And I'm sure the number has uh, grown quite a bit since then. That was 20 years ago that he was told that. And uh, I, I run into these stories Amazingly, I remember, I run into them with people I know at work. You know, it's uh, it's it's really pervasive, and so it's something that nobody's ever been allowed to get very close to that finish line. And That's uh, very interesting. So anyway, it's it's um, it's, it's, a, it's quite actually, a it's it's a carefully washed pot that, right. that they make sure will not boil. And in fact, I think that the chances of an outsider scaling those ramparts in in the current environment are about zero. I don't, I don't, I, I see the Dennis's and the Greer's and, and the O'Leary's and stuff going after it, and my hat's off to them, but, oh, yeah, but, man, but, the, the but odds the, they are taking on are immense. But wait, do you think guys like Greer actually have something, or they're, they're just sort of playing That's some a, sort of game? Um, well, so, so when you say have something, so anyway, uh, uh, how to say it, like, let's say Sparky's thing. So Sparky had, I mean, he actually had real uh, working prototypes. And again, he was, you know, he was tapping into the zero point field. I, I, I pretty much have no doubt about that. However, um, the whole science about that, for a guy who's working in his garage, um, you know, he'd have prototypes that worked great for a while, then they just stopped working and he, he couldn't figure out why. And, uh, you know, the, the science, it's, it's very delicate, you know, and there's uh In fact, uh, one of the things that uh, becomes evident uh, when you're starting to play around with that stuff is that it's it's not just a piece of equipment interacting. You know, it's, it's it's not just pure physics in that it apparently there's interactions with the consciousness of the people that are doing it. There's psychotronic effects apparently, and mm -hmm. so there's just a lot to it. And um, I think that so the, so the stuff that I'm aware of. Okay, and Greer talks about 30th generation, and from what I know, I'll buy that. You know that 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 the stuff that's been developed in the above black world is stuff that you could put on your house. But again, you're not going to get it. I'm not going to get it, at least not now. And and I, I I personally think that the outcome of the struggle that's happening at that level in the near term is probably going to determine how this ends up going. That, that's that's what I think. And whether there are extraterrestrials involved in that mix, um, I wouldn't be surprised, but I am definitely not privy to what's going on there. But I, I'll just say that I've there's been enough strange stuff that I'm aware of uh, in that field to think that at that level is probably in the near term where it's going to be decided. Now, Uh, you know, when I mortgaged my life to try to spring my uh, partner from jail back in 1989, I thought that it was a completely futile gesture. I was just throwing my life away. And I thought the odds of it actually, you know, having a positive impact were less than 1%. You know, but it worked. I mean, in the, we did spring him from jail. So kind of where I am is that, in fact, I we, we've had enough divine intervention on mm -hmm. our journey that was so strange that and that was know, dennis lee was it not 
Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. And so um, the thing is, is that when you're in, and again, it's it, it's such a difficult field to play on. And how? And though uh, anybody who's played at those levels, it's not just the white hats and the black hats and what they're doing. But there's also something bigger happening, and you definitely uh, you get to experience it, and you're kind of and miracles happen, and horrible things happen, but you realize that it's a heck of a lot bigger than a few guys trying to scale the ramparts, you know. And so, you know, I'm like the people who are doing it. Yeah, if we're going to be rational and stand back and say, what are the odds of actually Stephen Greer really succeeding? I would have to say about zero. But you know what? We don't see the big picture. I don't think we see everything that's going on. And so, you know, I'm I'm always ready for the Muppet movie ending, you know, where all of a sudden, you know, somebody like Greer, he, he walks up to the front door and knocks, and they let him in, and they're like, oh, here, okay, fine. And, in fact, um, my experience and the things I've heard Greer say and some of my other close associates is that uh, Greer uh, – uh, and I, I can't say too many names here, but Greer has talked about he's been tagged this way when he was uh, stirring things up back in the 90s, is that the the global controllers, they really, uh, how to say it, they can't afford to be the people seen bringing this stuff forward. And so if you if you crawl over blo- broken glass for long enough, they look at you as a contender and you're, you're you become a candidate for the person who may be able to bring it forward. And mm. again, it's, it's not that, that you're so, uh, you know, again, it, anybody who brings this forward is going to realize that it wasn't them, you know, it wasn't all their virtue that brought it forward. So I'm saying those dynamics are happening. And so when, when a Greer keeps knocking on the door and they keep banging on the door and they, and they keep, you know, trying things, I'm kind of going, you know what? You never know. Could I, had a, I had a, one more question that's related to this. Greer right now is 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 has been advertising for the longest time, looking for investors to put money into whatever projects that uh, he's pursuing, uh-huh. right? Now, if 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 these these situations are as you say, and they are such a long shot, yep. you know why uh, would these individuals would want to invest in something that that is so dangerous and so far? Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. I, that's danger. a good question. That's a good question, and I have a a few possible answers. Okay, one is is that, in fact, I write about it. Um, free energy. I mean, the thing is, is that uh, energy scarcity has defined the human journey. Even in our so-called advanced uh, economies and societies, it's still energy scarcity based, and so much of the way we live is defined by energy scarcity. If you actually have free energy, um, in fact, it was, it was available to everybody. And in fact, the winner would be something like what Sparky had, and it would be you know the size of a deck of cards and it would power your home forever. That would just be the beginning. And you could easily see, uh, like today, the world economy is you know, 60 to $70 trillion a year. That could easily become fifty quadrillion dollars a year, okay, um, under a free energy regime. And again, it would be like Star Trek. We we can barely imagine what that world would look like. However, free energy makes that world possible. And so, you know, and let me just try to put my, you know, how to say it. The word investor in that, uh, maybe there are investors who actually think that, you know, they're going to actually strike it big. And if you did, yeah, true. You're not going to see the world's first trillionaire. You're going to see the world's first quadrillionaire if you know if somebody's going to play the Bill Gates capital game on that. However, I think it would be the end of capitalism in an underabundance-based economy. Uh, you wouldn't again uh, keeping track, keeping score would really stop meaning a whole lot. You know, if everybody lived in abundance. And so the people making the so-called investments, maybe there is some of this. They want to be the firstest with the mostest. Um, I would think, though, that a lot of them, um, and so there is that part of it. I mean, if you want to, and yeah, it's sort of like, um, you know, when they used to sink oil wells, you know, or, or dig for gold, the, the odds of, of, of success were pretty small. But if you hit it big, you hit it big, you know. Well, this would be the, the biggest of the big would be hitting that one. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's the biggest lottery that you could ever imagine. However, 
Um, I would realistically, if I was, you know, quote, an investor, and I've been an investor in some of these things, um, you realistically, you'd have to look at it as a tithe. You know, I mean, to actually think you're going to get a return on it, uh, you know, in in real dollars, uh, you got to, I, the odds of that happening are extremely slim. But yeah, if you know, maybe some of these so-called investors are looking at it that way, that they might be a part of the quadrillion dollar hit. Um, at the same time, uh, I would think that, and in fact, uh, Brian O'Leary's been looking for, I know, at least 10 years, looking for altruists to help fund some of this stuff. Because, and again, Bearden's talked about it, to where if, uh, I mean, like like Sparky stuff. I mean, you really couldn't build Sparky stuff in a garage. And I, and there's a lot of there's a big movement out there. People trying to you know do these things in garages, et cetera. But uh, what I've seen, in my opinion, and again, I I don't keep up on it to the extent that a Brian or a Bearden does. But they're saying you you know a couple hundred million dollars with an Intel type facility, and you could get ready to mass produce like a Sparky Suite, you know, solid state free energy device. And uh, at the same, but that's what it, that's what it takes. The problem is, is that once you start getting the money to do something like that, I mean, you're you're going to definitely be on the radar. And so, it, to me, it's not so much a question of, gee, can you get some money together to build a facility like that, et cetera. It's w- will you be allowed to do something like that yeah. and and again the the, the bag of tricks if it let's let's put it this way i guess the question would the be people around the world they, if they want to take you out you don't have a prayer i mean that's right. where i am you don't have a prayer if they want to take you out yeah I, I guess the question would be to impress investors would be uh how much is this bullseye in the back of my head going to cost me um Oh, yeah, it's, again, if you're playing that game, you, you, and again, do it in downtown Manhattan, and yes, you have a tremendous bullseye on you, and however, and this is what I'm going to say, is that the um, so-called black hats, yeah, they'll be watching very carefully, but so do the white hats, uh, and this I know for a fact, okay, and so both sides are watching very carefully, and both sides act very subtly. Sometimes they act very dramatically, but it's quite subtle too. And so I'm saying, if you if you go onto that um, arena and you're playing the, the 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 forces that are involved in watching and encouraging or discouraging you, uh, from my experience, you have barely any idea of what's really going on. And I, and also the things that I've experienced is that. Some of what's going on, the attention that is being got on this, it's not just worldly physical reality either, okay? And so, again, I've had some divine intervention, voice in my head. I've had things happen to where you realize that there's something a lot bigger happening. And so, anyway, to me, it's, you know, it's it's big stuff. I mean, I, I the energy issue and the free energy technology, et cetera, I don't know of a bigger issue on the planet right now. And so yeah. that's the one, again, the human journey. If you, again, if you think about if everybody on the planet could have access to a thousand times their daily calories. I mean, today, the average American only has access to 80 times their daily calories. And that's only Americans. I mean, the world average is, you know, 15 or something. And if everybody had access to a thousand times their daily calories and there was no environmental impact to, to that. Again, we could... I've been living with that for a long time. I can barely imagine what that looks like, you know. And, and so, anyway, it's it's big stuff, and it, it's it's pretty overwhelming stuff. Uh, and that's part of, I mean, that's part of one of the actually perils of all of this is that it's so, the implications are so tremendous and overwhelming that you know it's it's daunting to even think about it. And so, anyway, it's you know that's yeah. that's, that's part of that's part of the I territory. Okay. Now you, 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 I've heard. And this is just what I've heard through the grapevine. That you can play around with a whole bunch of different subjects in the alternative field. You can play around with ghosts. You can play around with parapsychology. You can play around with remote viewing. Mm -hmm. UFOs. You can play there as much as you want pretty much. There's some some barriers. There's there's some some things you got to watch out for. But generally, if you start playing in the free energy field... Yes. Then you better suit up. Well, that energy is the linchpin for the world economy and always has been. Okay, so that's real, I and mean, that's got an economic impact. And the people who run the planet, 
they, their leverage is economically. 